we have to discuss three more points in RBCs. One is lifespan and disposal. Then we will take up the conditions which are required for erythropoiesis. And in the end, we will talk about hemoglobin, that is the pigment, the red pigment, which is present in RBCs. We have seen, or we just now talked about the lifespan, that RBCs lifespan is 120 days. Now what happens after 120 days? So after it has completed its life of 120 days, they undergo phagocytosis. That means they are uh, engulfed by the WBCs. So after 120 days, they are phagocytosed by WBCs and they are destroyed in spleen. Destroyed in spleen. And spleen is the organ where their production also is taking place during fetal stage where as well as they are getting destroyed. And that is why spleen is known as the graveyard as well as the blood bank because this is the place where excess or extra RBCs are stored as well as they are destroyed in the spleen also, same place. So this is the graveyard as well as the blood bank. After destroying RBC, the plasma membrane of RBC is flexible and it is known as Donnan's membrane. So here we will write the membrane of RBC is flexible and it is known as Donnan's membrane. So it is made up of same proteins and phospholipids which get used up. The hemoglobin part here is broken down into three components. One is hemosiderin, which is iron containing part. It gets used up. The next is bilirubin, which is the yellow pigment present in bile and from here it gets excreted in bile. And third is biliverdin, which is also a yellow pigment present in bile and it gets excreted. So this hemosiderin, which is iron rich part, it gets, we can write iron rich and gets reused. So plasma membrane, that is Donald's membrane is digested, proteins and phospholipids get used up. Hemoglobin is broken down into three components. Hemoglobin, oh sorry, hemosiderin, which is the iron containing one, gets reused. Bilirubin is the main pigment and biliverdin. They are yellow color and they get excreted out. Now here we will add one more point that bilirubin is that yellow pigment which imparts the pale yellow color to plasma. It imparts pale yellow color to plasma and these two get excreted out. If these two remain in the body, they get deposited under the skin and that condition is known as jaundice. So this is about the lifespan and disposal. 120 days, <coughs> after 120 days they would be destroyed. They undergo or they are phagocytosed by the phagocytes like WBCs. Destruction takes place in spleen and spleen is the same gland where they are produced in fetal stage. After birth, they are stored also here and they are destroyed also here. So the spleen is known as graveyard as well as the blood bank. Now coming to this erythropoiesis which we talked about in short. 
This is the process of RBC production. The place where this takes place. So place, sorry, place of production. These organs are known as erythropoietic organs. And we have written down the names also that in fetal stage, these organs are liver and spleen and after birth, this job is done by red bone marrow. There is a chemical which is required for this process to take place and that chemical is erythropoietin which is secreted by kidney. So it is a chemical or hormone secreted by kidney. It is also required for erythropoiesis. Two more things which are required for erythropoiesis. Folic acid and B12, vitamin B12, that is cyanocobalamin. So these things are required for the process of erythropoiesis. Now let us come to the last part that is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is present in RBC. One RBC has about 200 to 280 million hemoglobin molecules. This is the number. And if we just go by how much hemoglobin is present, then it is 12 to 16 grams per 100 milliliter of blood. This is called the hemoglobin count. So this is our hemoglobin count. Like we had the RBC count, this is the hemoglobin count. Again, hemoglobin per, uh, count or number or mass would decrease because of any of the conditions. Like if iron is not there because iron is one of the constituents of hemoglobin or if there is protein deficiency. Now this hemoglobin, it is made up of two parts, the heme that is the iron containing part and globin which is the protein part. So this is protein and this is the iron containing part. And in the chapter of respiration, breathing and exchange of gases, we talked about that one hemoglobin molecule can transport four oxygen molecules. And this is the respiratory pigment. It helps in transport of respiratory gases. <clears throat> so this hemoglobin is essential for transport of respiratory gases. If hemoglobin is less, the condition again would be termed as anemia. Less hemoglobin leads to anemia. And this is the value and we have given the range. It is less in case of females and more in case of Mates. Hemoglobin can bind with oxygen to form a temporary short-lived complex known as oxyhemoglobin and it can also bind with carbon dioxide to form again a short-lived temporary complex called carbaminohemoglobin. Hemoglobin has more affinity towards carbon monoxide. So in those conditions, it can bind with carbon monoxide also. The conditions are whenever there is carbon monoxide available. So as compared to oxygen, its affinity towards carbon monoxide is 200 times greater. So it would bind with carbon monoxide. 
to form a permanent complex known as carboxy hemoglobin. These things we have studied in detail in the respiration chapter. So, in RBC, hemoglobin is present. The values we have <coughs> already written, it is made up of two parts, the heme part and the protein that is globin part. Heme part is in the ferrous condition and each of this can bind to one molecule of oxygen. So there are four ferrous. We have seen the structure also in detail. It has a porphyrin head where there are four pyrrole rings. Each pyrrole ring has one ferrous to which one oxygen attaches or can bind. So one hemoglobin can transport four molecules of oxygen or if we have to write in grams that also we wrote in that chapter one gram of hemoglobin can transport 1.34 milliliters of oxygen. So whether it is in terms of grams or molecule wise it helps in transport of respiratory gases. So these few are more important things about RBCs. So this is our first corpuscle that we have discussed. The next one is going to be WB.